Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Well, see, over the past couple months, I've been drinking. You already know this. Got back on the beers. But you know what I haven't been doing? Bringing my empties back. I also need to go pick up some eggs for this uh, meal I'm having tonight. So I figure we can get two birds stone at the same time. We can take a rip over to the beer store, drop off all the uh, empties. I've already preloaded them in the truck so you don't have to sit through that nonsense. Hit up the grocery store that's right there and get some supplies for tonight's actual solid meal. I'm actually feeling pretty good after that protein shake from the other video, so. That's pretty awesome. We got a lot of beer, a lot of beer bottles and, and cans. Let me show you here. We got uh, two four, two twelves, a third 12. So this is $4.80 worth of empties. This bag here's about 50 cans, 50 cans, 12 bottles. So five, 10, $14.50, $15.70 worth of, worth of dollarinos sitting in the back of the truck right now. Not that it's a, a lot of money, but you know what? You could recycle it or you can send it back and get a little bit of cash on the side towards another case of beer. I'm thinking about buying a case of beer for the weekend. If I drink it, I drink it. If I don't, I don't. It is what it is. Just make sure the volume's off. Let's get you guys on the truck mount. There we go. All right, let's go hit up the beer store and we'll drop this piss off. And then we'll hit up the grocery store and pick some shit up. I gotta roll my window down, it's freaking hot in here. Huh, I was right. So the Ontario government removed a bunch of their tax from the gas price, right? And it literally lowered our gas by eight, eight cents a liter, which, you know, it's not much, but it's something. But then the gas companies turned around and spiked it back up again to, uh, it went from 212 down to 202, back up to 212. And I knew that was gonna happen because the same thing happened out in Alberta when the Alberta government said, okay, we're taking our, we're not gonna charge a tax on our gases anymore. We're just gonna remove our tax from it and be done with it. And they did that. The prices went down by like 16 cents at the pump and then the gas company Companies up the price 16 cents. So anybody who thinks that this gas price thing is a government thing, it's not. It's the fuel company basically being greedy. And I heard through the grapevine that apparently what's happening is uh, Warren Buffett, he runs a railroad company that ships oil. This probably applies only to the US, not really to Canada, but he runs a, a train company and his main export is oil to the refineries. And apparently he purposely lowered the amount of oil that he's shipping just to create a shortage so that people would run out and buy electric cars. Now here's my big concern. We don't really have it up here, like in North Bay, but in places like California and Florida, where like in the summer it's hot as balls and everybody's running their air conditioning full tilt like a Peterbilt, putting super stress on the grid. Can you imagine what would happen? Everybody's running their friggin' air conditioning full tilt like a Peterbilt, and then at night they all plug in their cars, start drawing extra power to charge up their car. The stress that's gonna put on the system, it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be impossible. Like you won't be able to hold your own. And even with electric cars nowadays, it's like, I watched the video. They did uh, the Ford, the new Ford Lightning, which is all electric, versus a Chevy Gasser that had a six liter, I don't know, six, some LS engine in it anyway. It was a V8. They hooked up a trailer to it and both trucks tried to go. The one, tr the, the Ford, which apparently has like, in Canada, they list it as 500 and 515 kilometer range. Now, mind you, that's probably tested in a vacuum or it's definitely, you're not gonna hit those numbers, that's a given. But 515 kilometer range, don't know what that is in miles, don't really care either because I live in Canada. The truck literally did like, 80 miles and was done. It was spent and we ran out of power. Like the, the buddy was like literally limping it to a charge station where the truck that had the gas engine had enough fuel to make it back. The problem with electric vehicles is still the battery technology. Now there are a lot of companies out there working on new battery technology. Samsung's working, reworking their sulfur lithium cells, which are gonna be solid state. The previous ones were not solid state. They might be a little bit better. Um, who else was dicking around with technology? There's some company based out of, out of Japan that's working on a nuclear diamond battery. Look that up. The concept is cool, but I, I don't know, man. Carrying a little fission reactor inside of my cell phone kind of irks me. But the battery is self-regenerating because something they do to the diamond, it'll create electricity by being around an isotope. I really don't want my freaking phone to go back to the Zach Morris days 
with the old Motorola's that cause cancer you know what I mean so it's one of those it's, a, it's like a hit and miss situation cool concept and all but like holy frig if it works it works sweet like it'd be nice to put that in a vehicle that can self-regenerate and then you, you literally have a car that you can drive that you never have to see a gas station again or a charge station you just friggin drive it and when it doesn't have any more potential you park it let it get potential and go again but i guess you can do that with uh with solar cells on the electric cars too but there's a lot of techno seeing how there's been a lot of countries forcing or putting a mandate that stating like after said date it's going to be forced to go electric a lot of companies are, are trying to come up with a way to make electric cars more feasible you know what i'm gonna friggin park right I should park right up front. Why don't I? I got MTs to bring in. This isn't a handicap. Nope. One beside me is. All right, I'm gonna run these beers in and um, I'll be right back. And there's about two crushed 30 packs per, yeah, per bag. Uh, yeah, I'll get a 30 pack of Michelob if you have it. There we go. Beer acquired. Shove it right there. Oh, you guys got front row seat to that. Did you guys even see anything in there? No, not really. Pretty wide angle. I think I want to go over to Independent. Mainly because they got... Uh, I almost want to go to No Frills because they got those chicken thighs on sale. Now we'll go over to Independent because I want to grab, uh, they got chicken wings over at Independent that are on sale. And I kind of want to fire up the barbecue on Saturday and potentially smoke a couple. And by smoke, I just mean cook. I don't, my barbecue can't smoke. Well, it probably could smoke if I had some chips in it, but it would take forever for me to smoke in that thing. Oh, look at this guy with the kayak. I thought about that with this with this truck. I was like, you know, if I bought a kayak or canoe, where the hell am I going to put it? Like, if I want to go truck camping with a kayak, I need to put it on top of the vehicle. So I was looking at like those, the rack that he has on his car. They actually make them for boxes, like for toppers. So I thought about doing that, like getting a, uh, like a topper thing and putting a rack on the top of the truck. And that way there, I could mount a kayak or a canoe up there. And then, or I could just use like pool noodles, I guess, and just tie the canoe to the trailer hitch and the front to the front tie, uh, tow hooks, and it would hold on for dear life. Well, I hope. Unless I corner really hard and then she goes flying off the side and kills somebody. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But that guy's got a pretty dope setup on the roof of his Kia. Pretty aerodynamic. Like, look at the way that kayak's cutting through the wind. Like, it's just chewing it. Just getting her done. Zero frigs, boys. Zero frigs. Yeah, so the kids are going fishing tonight. I think they're crazy. It's like 22 kilometer an hour winds with gusts hitting 35. Like, you know, you're slightly, uh, slightly dedicated when that rock is going to be a puddle. All right, so we'll go over to Independent. Now that we got our confidence fuel, our dancing liquid, if you will, for the weekend. Whether or not I drink, that's another story. I just like having beer on hand because you never know. You never know when you want to get sauced. Man, I remember hitting these, they're not so bad now, but I remember before hitting those speed bumps in the Trans Am and hearing crunch. Probably crushed my exhaust pipe or something, who knows? Probably, you never freaking know. Probably saying, Adam, why are you parking so far away? Well, there's a reason behind that, beside that. It's, it's because of my driver door, getting a freaking ding from somebody at Walmart. But we're at Independence, so I'm gonna take off the mic, shut off the camera, head inside, get my shit, and I'll be back. All right, not gonna lie, I kinda went a little overdose on the friggin' chicken wings, cause they were like 10 bucks for a big pack, and well, I friggin' love chicken wings, boys. What can I say? Chicken wings are life. So I grabbed three packs of chicken wings, and they had steak on sale, so I grabbed some small steaks. Pretty good for a post-workout meal, especially when you're gonna be eating keto. For eggs, I didn't buy a carton of whole eggs. I bought egg whites. Reason being is, once again, keep that fat content down until my stomach is back online. So far, I'm feeling no distress from my smoothie that I had, but that ice, way I isolate is like 35 grams of protein, one gram of fat, and one gram of carbs. Like, it's so clean. It was also not cheap, but I didn't buy it. <laughs> um, my buddy Joe bought it from Nature's Harvest down on Main Street. He didn't like the taste, and I don't blame him. It kind of tastes like fart, but I've had worse. So, not saying I would go drinking farts, but, well, I might. You never know. I'm kind of a weird guy. Do I want to gas up the truck tonight? You know what? 
I'm gonna gas up the truck tonight because I got paid today. So normally on payday, I go and top up the truck. And that way there, I got a full tank of gas. Like I said, this, this weekend, we're going out to my buddy's house. Gonna go try Four Mile Bay one more freaking time. See how much of a disaster that's gonna be. Should be pretty good though, because it's gonna have some camaraderie there. Uh, my buddy's friend, Debbie, is coming out and she's already said she can outfish me. And well, last time I was there, she was three sheets to the wind, mind you, but uh, she challenged me to a fish off. You guys remember my little Zebco spin caster? Well, she has the model down from that. So we're sitting on the dock and she's casting and it's like literally landing maybe three feet away. Like it's, the line's just not coming out of the reel. So I asked her, I'm like, when was the last time you changed the line on that thing? I'm like, how, how long have you had that reel? And she goes, Oh, that rod and she's like oh it's been four years and I said okay when was the last time you changed the line on it and she said never well if you're an angler you know very well monofilament line gets lots of memory when not in use when you leave it coiled up she'll literally become a freaking 1980s telephone handset cord so it was not ejecting off the spool at all so I told her I'm like yeah you're gonna need some new line, get some six or eight pound test, some trialine or something. You can't put braid on those, unfortunately. Uh, we tried with the buddies because he's like all about the braid. So we tried putting some braid on it and it just doesn't work. I don't know why, I, I guess it gets stuck on all the mechanical stuff because of how it's like a, like a saw block. I wonder if you could run that spider wire that's coated with that shit. Maybe that might work, but I've never seen eight pound braid spot, uh, spider wire. I just like braid over mono because like when a fish bites my uh, bites my lure, I feel it right away. With mono, it's so elasticy that you don't feel it as soon. And setting the hook like uh, on mono, I find is a bit of a, a bit of an ordeal because of how stretchy the line is. Fluoro is not too bad, but it's even worse for memory. I got a spool of it that I use for tying off leaders, and it's like you take a chunk off and it's permanently coiled. If you're wondering where I'm going, I'm going to the Canadian Tire Gas Bar. We're gonna top up there. Oh, it's 205 now. It was 210 this morning when I went to work, but it's 205. I got five eighths of a tank, so it'll probably take a hundred bucks to fill it. We'll see how much it costs when we get there. But yeah, I keep talking about this truck camping idea. And the worst part is, is I follow a bunch of YouTubers that uh, used to go fishing, but I guess after they saw Mav's success on YouTube with truck camping, they decided to give truck camping a go to see if they could basically replicate. But you can't beat the original, man. You can't beat the original. Like Mav started the whole truck camping thing and he got big on YouTube doing crazy shit like parking in McDonald's driveways and buying a Big Mac and then making his own and then having people test it to see which one they liked better and you know stuff like that it, it's it's and then he did the whole fishing camping driving across the USA and all that shit living in his truck for a year and a half to save up money to buy a house you know it, it's hard to beat someone who's already done it but I don't even care about competing with with Mav or, or, or any of these guys on truck camping I just want to give it a go that's why I want my setup to be a temporary setup where I can use it. But then if I need, like if dad calls me and says, hey, we need to move a dresser, can we use your truck? Or we need to do this, can we use your truck? I can just take all the shit out, fire it in the garage, and then we got the truck. And in the winter, I won't be in camping mode because I have zero will to be in a camper in the winter. But I do want to give it a go. I was thinking if I don't do it in August, September, because there's a lot of people off right now and uh, I just got such good work ethic that I don't like screwing over the company. But anyway, I'm gonna go pump some gas into this thing and I'll be back and tell you how much it cost me. Alrighty, grand total, 105.86. So I was close, I said 100 bucks. 105.86 to fill the tank. And I even did the old, uh, when it stops, you wait 30 seconds and go again for a bit just to make sure she's right top. Eh, some people say that's bad for the carbon canister. They're probably right. They're probably right, but you know, since when do I ever do anything right around here? Welcome to the Thunderdome, bitches. All right, let's get the hell out of here and go home and drop these groceries off and a beer and let's cook some dinner. I'm hungry. Or, actually, you know what's funny? I'm not even hungry. I'm just eating so I can teach my body how to consume friggin' solids again. Because that's something that I really need to do. Especially if I want to get back into lift. I do want to get back into lifting. You know what's one big regret I have? You guys remember last fall I sold that weight bench? Well, I semi have a regret for it. Like, that weight bench kind of sucked. It had a, a weight limit of 300 pounds. Because the bar that actually supports it in the upright position could only handle that much weight. 
No, that's the safety weight. You could probably put 350 pounds on it and not have a grenade on you, but I wasn't about to risk it for a biscuit and do bench press on that and have it collapse and just decapitate myself in the house by myself with nobody ever contacting me or checking in on me. So for safety purposes, I figured, you know what, we better not, better not try that because that would suck. So... But one thing, uh, I found a, a rear delt workout and I want to try it, but you need an incline bench. Now I might be able to get away with the bow flex as long as I don't wrap the weights off the friggin' the arms that hold the, uh, the bows. And you're probably saying, well, why don't you just use the bows if you're going to use the bow flex? It's because you can't get the right angle on it. And the rear delt exercise has you laying face down on the incline uh, bench. And then you swing your arms on an angle backwards because doing bent over flies engages your traps more then it will engage your rear delts. That's what they're saying anyway. And you know what, I, I can confirm it because when I do bent over rows and I get right bent over like on a 90 and I'll, I'll hold the weight sideways and, and flare them out kind of like you would do with a pec deck, like a reverse pec deck. I don't find that my rear delts get hit as hard as they do when I'm doing a wide grip bar row, like a bent over wide grip bar row. I find I'm really crushing my rear delts that way. And that's always, like when I used to go to the gym, that's what I always noticed on people was like the really big guys had good defined rear delts because they knew what they were doing. They'd do reverse pack deck and destroy the rear delts. But a lot of the guys there would do like focus mainly on the front and the side delts and then their, their shoulder would just kind of fall off. Ooh, nice bike. Oh, I'd love to get my motorcycle license. That'd be so awesome. Go out motorbiking on, on a night like tonight. Just put on the helmet, grab the GoPro and go do a moto vlog. I think people still watch those, right? Moto vlogging still a thing. I would not turn this channel into a moto vlog channel by any means necessary. It would just be like every once in a while a moto vlog video would happen. It'd be kind of nice. Yeah, I know. I bought that motorcycle back in the day and didn't do anything with it. It's because you know what? I wasn't making that much. Well, that's after I lost the job with, uh, I got laid off in Ontario and then had the buyout and then I had a bunch of shit jobs that were barely paying enough to keep the house running, let alone food on the table. So back then I was like hashtag blessed YouTube was making good money because it was helping offset the fact that I wasn't <laughs> oh man I took the practice test for the M1 and there was a couple questions I didn't get so I'm gonna have to go and find a I think Canadian Tire sells them the the, the rules the manual there the motorcycle manual I got to read through it and study it and then take the practice test again and then go down I think it's like a hundred bucks to go write your M1 and then we have uh, a course at the Canada College here where you basically, uh, they, they, they have motorcycles for you to use and they teach you all the road stuff and, and all that. And you get to ride a motorcycle there and learn how if you don't have one. And then you get your M2 right there. So I don't really want to get a bike and insure it until I get my M2. It would just be nice. Like I talked to Rex and he was like, oh yeah, man, I put like 10 bucks in my tank and I can go like 300 kilometers. And I'm thinking, wow, I wouldn't ride it to work because I'd have nowhere to park it. But it would be fun like on a night like like tonight, right? like not right now because I went and got groceries and shit. But like on a regular night, just to jump on the bike and just go bombing around, just to go joyriding. Mind you, that's what I should be doing on my pedal bike, but... But then I could do moto vlogs, go bombing around town and chat with you guys on the tubes and brapping all around. Could be a good time. Alrighty, well, I'm almost home. Can't wait. All I can smell is this buffalo chicken. I'll show you the pack. I'll, I'll show you what I bought when I get home. And then uh, you'll, you'll know. You'll know what I got. You'll know what I got. All right, we'll see you there. All right. I'm gonna bring these bags in first. This is uh, a lot of carnivore stuff. Yeah, I'm sticking to carnivore, I love it. You know, there's a lot of dietary guys online that I follow and they're like, carnivore is so catabolic and I'm like, how? See, this is what I mean by I got a lot of cardboard. This was all stacked nicely, but I also have a cat and she's an idiot. Sorry for the heavy lean on the tripod. There's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, guys, here are the chicken wings. This is a pretty decent price. There's uh, almost a kilo worth in here of buffalo wings. And per 100 grams, how many grams are in here? So 800 grams. Per 100 grams, it's 210 calories, 15 grams of fat, one gram of carbs, and 19 grams of protein. So that's like over 100 grams of protein right there. Can your body consume that? No. Will I do it anyway? Damn Skippy, I'll cook that whole pack. But I didn't just buy one. Like I said in the truck, I bought three. 
I bought three. There's one in there and there's two here. So we got chicken wings for days. Those will get consumed on the weekend. Also, I was talking about those steaks that I bought. These are pretty thick. Like, it's hard to tell on camera, but that's a thick friggin' chunk of meat. I got you guys in wide angle mode too right now. Let me fix that. There, now you should be in linear. So yeah, you get three steaks and this was a grand total of $17. Price of cows, stupid. Probably because of the price of diesel though. I don't know why they're using diesel for cows, but hey, you know what? I'm not a farmer, so I don't know these things. And then, like I said, I bought some egg whites. I usually get this other kind, but they didn't have it. So I just bought this menu blue stuff, egg whites in a carton. So we'll uh, fry up some of those tonight and have it with the fish. And I bought some butter because I'm out of butter and I wanted butter so I can make buttery things. What the hell is this? You could win a $1,000 PC gift card. Oh, it's a survey token. Everybody wants surveys. And last but not least, I also picked up some Excel mints because, well, everybody has a crutch and mine is freaking Excel mints. I was gonna air fry the fish, but you know what? I think I'm gonna pan fry them. The only reason being is they're actually not bad looking fillets and I don't see the point in wrecking them. All right, I'm gonna preheat the pan and then we get cooking. This turns out awesome. I might just say screw it and just have fish for supper and save the eggs. Put these guys in the fridge. I say I gotta watch my fat intake because of fasting. And then I go and put a lot of butter in the pan. Whatever. Whatever. I do what I want. Frying fish and butter. It's gonna be so good. Should have bought some low carb wraps and made some fish tacos. All right. I'm gonna say fish doesn't take long to cook. That's what I love about fish. I'm gonna say this is done. And you know what? This is a lot of food. I don't eat eggs. I was gonna throw some eggs into this butter. Mind you, this is a lot of butter. Just gonna kind of move this over here. Let that cool down a bit. And there be my fasting meal. Mother freaking butterfish. Mother freaking, you know what? I'm gonna throw some pitter patter powder onto that. Just to give it a little bit of jam. Because everybody loves a little bit of jam. I have to mix up another batch of this piss. Starting to run a little low. I checked in the freezer a while ago and I forgot I got a rotisserie chicken in there. I bought that to test out the old air fryer with just to see how rotisserie mode works. We got to do that one of these days. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go eat and I'll talk to you in a bit. All right guys, it's friggin' late o'clock. It's like super late. It's like almost 10.30. Normally I'm in bed by now, but I was doing some editing on the video you're watching right now because I gotta get back into the groove of things, start producing content and coming up with ideas for better content than walking around and talking about food and fasting because uh, a lot of people don't give two shits about that and uh, I don't blame you. So, but then again, this channel's always been about stuff that I've been doing. How's that microphone looking? My uh, hip mic is showing red. I've never drained these things down that far before. So that, uh, kind of worries me but yeah if I can find my motorcycle manual I think I'm gonna read up on it even if I get my license I don't have to go out and buy a bike tomorrow I can uh, definitely wait on that that's uh, not a requirement right now my requirement is getting a battery for that Trans Am getting that thing back on the road so I can drive the shit out of it because I missed my car I just aimed the camera and I walked out of scene man I'm the best cameraman ever I'm the best cameraman ever. Got a hit on one of the weed whackers, the uh, green one. Uh, somebody wants to buy it for the motors because their kid wants to make a motorized scooter. Well, whatever, wear a helmet. And the other weed whacker, if nobody picks it up, what I might do is I found a 3D printable that can make a motor, basically a prop. And uh, Logan has a kayak that can take a motor. So you probably see where I'm getting from this. We're going to try putting a prop on that, hooking it up to his kayak and seeing if it'll actually move. So that's going to be a fun little project that I'm going to undertake. I got some upgrades to do to my printer before I even take on that task. Like I got to replace the Bowden tube. And I would like to get wait till I get the metal extruder in, put that into play. And then I'm going to print the damn thing in PETG so it's durable. And if he bangs it off a rock, it shouldn't explode into a million pieces. But you never know because sometimes that happens. But anyway, guys, stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, guys, live it to win it and peace the frig out.
Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.